Howdy, everybody. How are we doing today? We're doing well? Hope so. Right, chat's already got going. I'm going to start from the top. Um, howdy, account Corey. Howdy, Bevan Borges. Uh, autistic fan. Hello, I just came here right after watching an episode of The Clone Wars 3D uh, that had a great second half. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Uh, just need to find out before anything, though. Is the sound all right? Let me know if the sound's okay, folks. Uh, Pem and Paddy. Hello. Uh, da, 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 got a bit of a chat going off here. Ethan. Free director asks, how is it going? Okay. Uh, it's just at the moment I'm working on a video that's probably going to be about an hour, and a, uh, an hour and a half long. And it's about ten different su uh, animated superhero movies. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like the straight to video animated superhero movies, I'm doing ten of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, it's gonna it's gonna take me a lot, it's gonna take me all week to get done. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. So that's the thing that I'm focusing on now. The thing that makes ma is making me very very tired as well. Um, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Uh, e uh, another question from Ethan Free Director: How do you think studios should go about movies based on cartoon series to make them feel like movies instead of longer em episodes? It's simpler than it really is, because all all they need to do is take the templates of their cartoon series and start from scratch and tell a story, tell a tell a beginning, middle, and end movie cinematic story. Just using just using their cartoon series as inspiration rather than uh, the beginning of their story. <laughs> so yeah, I th I think yeah. Da, 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 da. Where am I here? Uh, Loco Loco Laranja. Hello, Jamboree King crew. It's just me today. Just me. Uh, it's very difficult to get others to join <laughs> join these streams because uh, they've got their own stuff to do. And howdy, computer guy. Da, 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 da. Sound is good, sound is good, excellent. Uh, autistic fan, not including Darth Vader, what is your favourite Star Wars villain? Um, so, ex so basically excluding Darth Vader. That's difficult, because Vader is the best one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd say the second best one is possibly the Emperor. I'm going to go with the Emperor, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Emperor's really intimidating, very sinister, and the way he builds up his plan throughout the prequels, yeah, pretty cool. Um, ba ba ba. Good guy, I finally managed to watch Wolf Wall, because this movie was fantastic. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly encourage you to do so. I definitely will, it's on my watch list. I'm going to get round to it when I have this thing called, um, A Day Off. Sounds, sounds magical. <laughs> I'd love to experience that. <laughs> oh, it's been a while since I've had a day off. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, howdy, Cameron. Uh, account Corey. What's your opinion on the current state of the channel? What do you mean by the channel? I, I don't I don't know what you mean. Sorry. Um, Bevan. Um, hello, Jim Freaky. I want to ask you if you hate the Jungle Book 2016 remake because you praised it in your review of the film, but it's quite critical in the Film Chums podcast. I pretty much have changed my mind about all the live action Disney remakes. Uh, if I'm honest, like rewatching them again. Uh, I'm like no. I was I I think I think I was I was way too kind on those films. Um, so I think I think all my reviews of them have pretty much outdated. I've really changed my mind on them. That watching those movies was probably the worst film marathon I've ever done. I felt so exhausted. I felt like I was going to be sick by the end. That's not me being exaggerating. I literally felt so tired, and I, I it, just, it just felt painful to get through each one. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're really difficult to get through. Um, Cameron, good news, I got my vaccination on Friday. Awesome, fantastic, well done. Peppin, Patty Pals, my username is named after a group I have with my friends in third grade. I have no idea why I still use it. I say still use it, it's a cute name. Uh, my Manacho, 1998, hi Jam, between Kong Godzilla, who would you place your bet on just for fun? I don't know. <laughs> I love both characters. I know that realistically, I think, I think Kong's supposed to be the bigger one, but I know when whenever they fight, they make them the same size. So I don't know. I really don't know. And in terms of like, in terms of like the country they come from, they don't come from my country, so I, I, I can't even have that kind of attachment to them. And like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think. 
I think maybe Godzilla there because like yeah Kong's got like brute strength but so was Godzilla and Godzilla can like shoot fire and all that jazz um, and Godzilla can survive in water better as well mm, mm. <laughs> but I can imagine some people in the comments are going to count him and say uh, no actually <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. uh Cameron Blythe also I have a new cat I decided to name him Spam oh fantastic Spam do you want any Spam We've got spam, 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 or spam, 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 spam. Yes, obligatory uh, Monty Python reference there. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Autistic fan, do you still agree with most of the negative things you said in your Frozen review? I've not rewatched Frozen since I did that review, I think. Actually, I think the last time I watched Frozen was for my top five best and worst Disney movies video, so I really can't say sorry. Uh, I, re I don't know. Uh, thank you for following Diamond Jolt. I think it's Underdash? Uh, Cos. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I've changed, how much I've changed my opinion on Frozen. I really don't know. Um... One day I'll revisit it, but for now I've got other stuff I, I need to watch. Um, GoJapan13, hello Jambriki, I hope you've enjoyed your day. Uh, I kind I kind of woke up about three, <laughs> so my days my days like only just started really. Where am I in the chat? Uh, account Corey, what's your opinion on the current state of the channel? I know you've you've asked that before, but I I don't know. Which channel you mean? I don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Sorry. Um, Kippa dude, I love the director video DC movies. That video sounds exciting. Yeah. So I've so far I've watched Wonder Woman and Green Lantern: First Flight, and I'm having a blast. I'm really enjoying these films. They're so fun. They're they're really great. They're really great fun. I, I I'm surprised m more people don't talk about these these films because like they just enjoy they're really entertaining. <laughs> they have a lot of the merits that I think the live action superhero movies need to adapt more. Um, da da da. I look around you. I meant chat when I said crew. My bad. No worries. No worries. <laughs> uh, da da da. Computer guy. What what about Darth Maul? I'm. Darth Maul looks cool and is played by Ray Park, but that's all he's really got. He doesn't really have much of a character beyond that. <laughs> he's just cool, and that's it. <laughs> uh, and a good fighter. That's that's about it. I, when it comes to characters, there needs to be something deeper for me to resonate with. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up with chat. Um... Ethan Free Director, do you see Despicable Me 4 happening anytime soon? Most likely considering its success, and Minions 2 is coming out this year as well, so it's probably going to build up to something. Uh, favorite TV show intro? Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm, possibly the second opening of Death Note, mainly because I love Maximum the Hormone. It's just a really cool intro, great visuals, very colorful, but also kind of dark and twisted. And yeah, I really love that intro. Especially of the bit where L is like spinning on his chair eating candy to the music. That bit's so cool. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to. F where where am I? Uh, Account Corey, I love your review on Peter Rabbit. Thank you very much. Uh, GojiFan13, out of curiosity, did you see those video two videos I tweeted to you? I don't know, sorry. I've, I've gotten a lot of notifications. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Goji fan thirteen. Who would you rather be in a room for twenty four hours out of uh, Jack the Ripper and Jeffrey Dahmer? Uh, Ripper would be more interesting, especially when we don't know much about him. So I think probably Jack the Ripper. Opportunity to like interview him and get to know him a bit more, <laughs> which is a terrible thing to say, I know. But like uh, compared to Dahmer, where Dahmer's been, all his crimes and his life and his personality has been way more documented. Uh, yeah. Autistic fan, do you still enjoy making videos despite how stressful and time-consuming it has been lately? I really do, to be honest, because, like, when I'm not making something, I just feel like I should be making something. Um, it's kind of a drug for me, and, yeah, I just love talking about films, and I'm one of those weird people that adores doing editing. Editing is my favorite stage of YouTube videos. 
I love doing it. I love when I'm editing and I get into like a proper zone. And I'm like, yeah, man, whoa. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, Desmond Borges, Christopher Walken or Louis Prima? Um, Louis, definitely Louis Prima. Are we talking? If we're talking about King Louis, then definitely Louis Prima. He's he's so good as King Louis. Um, goes from thirteen. How would you feel about the passing of Christopher Plummer at the age of ninety-one? It's really tragic, really sad. Heart goes out to his uh, loved ones, and like he, he had he had like this amazing voice, and he was just a very talented actor, very very talented. Definitely got he's definitely left a legacy behind. Um. Da, 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 da. Whoa, 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 whoa! I think I'm onto the bit where it's like everyone's debating Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got Count Corey saying Team Monkey, <laughs> Computer Guide. Kong doesn't stand a chance against Godzilla. Uh, autistic fan, who is your favorite anime voice actor? Ooh, probably. Hmm. I don't know. I I've got a few. I mean, like, I, I like Crispin Freeman. Um, what's his name? There's an, I forgot his name. I feel bad now. Uh, I think he did uh, Greymon's voice in Digimon. Uh, oh, Mona Marshall is definitely one of my favorite anime voice actors. Uh, no, Greymon. I was trying to... It's, it's like Bob something? Pa Bob Papenbrook, yeah. I love him. He's really great. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Shane Vance, uh, how do you feel about any version of Pinocchio? I, I don't know what you mean there, because like there's a lot of versions of Pinocchio. Um, Evan J. Sims, I saw your review of Soul, and you did a decent job. Thank you. Uh, do you think Soul surpasses Toy Story 2? I've been thinking that after I did it, and I don't know. I really don't know, and I feel like I need to rewatch Toy Story 2 to probably decide that. Um, my manager in 1998, part of me wants to root for Kong since he's from America, where I live, but another part wants me to root for Godzilla since I grew up watching his movies with him. Uh, as long as neither die, we're cool. Aww. Uh, my manager in 1998, would you think Tim Burton would make a good Pinocchio movie? I don't know, because... Today's modern Tim Burton is very different to the Burton that used to be, so I, I don't I don't know. I don't have much faith, if I'm honest. Uh, uh, Bevan, how, uh, hey, Chambrick, I was just going to say, I noticed your allegorical nature of the Mortier storyline, a controlling lover who sends you gifts and tries to take you, sends you on a journey away from your family and friends, and you finally stand up to him. Yes, so that is pretty much a metaphor for... Um, from a domestic abuse, which is something I've personally experienced myself. Uh, and after experiencing myself, I kind of wish, I kind of wish I approached that story a different way, but it's kind of too late now. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, yeah. But like, that was definitely my motive was to kind of like explore that topic, but I don't think it was right for Jamboree reviewers in hindsight. Um, Da, da, da. Go to from thirteen. Who do you consider to be the true villain of Toy Story two out of Stinky Pete and Al? Um, I would. It, it depends on the context you see the villains because from the toys' perspective, I don't know because Al Al's not really. I think I think we've talked about this before, but like Al is not exactly the most in terms of the big scope of things. He's not. The worst villain out there, <laughs> uh, because the biggest crime he does is steal a child's um, toy, which is like probably one of the, the least <laughs> the least threatening crimes you can think of. But from the toy's perspective, that's a really really big deal. Um, but I don't know. I think they're both they're both kind of villainous in their own ways. Um, yeah, I don't I I don't really have an opinion if I'm honest. Computer guy, uh, Darth Maul is more developed in the comic book adaptation. He doesn't really get a chance to shine in the film, sadly. Yeah, I heard about that. And there's a fan film about him, too. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Ethan Free Director, are you planning to review Peter Rabbit 2? Uh, it kind of depends where it's going to get released. That's the hard thing about stuff coming out. Is I, don't know where the when the, I don't know when they're coming out in the UK, and I don't know where they're coming out. So it's it all depends on release, and it also depends on my schedule as well, because... Um, 
not much free time lately, especially this year. Um, d -d -d Cameron Blythe. I watched Pinocchio, the Disney movie from the 40s, and I haven't seen it since I was a kid. And my God, it gets really dark. I can't believe they don't stop the coachman from turning people into donkeys and sold as slaves. Yep. Uh, computer guy. By comic book adaptation, I meant the extended universe. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Uh, Account Corey. Hopefully, the new Mario movie is going to be the best Illumination movie. Uh, possibly. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. There's nothing to really work with at this stage. Um, and for me personally, I really like the live action Mario movie. <laughs> and like, I know how flawed it is, but like, I really enjoyed that movie. I really did. That's one of my major guilty pleasures. Um, da, 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 da. where am I in the chat now? Uh, Ghost from 13. Yeah, you made a smart choice. With Jack the Ripper, you'd get to know who he is. Plus, the on he only killed women, uh, while Dharma only killed men, depending on if he found them attractive. Uh, right? Uh, Autistic Fan, what made you tired of making episodes of Jamboree Reviews? Um, several factors went into it, to be honest, because, um... I didn't feel like Jambreaky Reviews had its had its own branding, um, and it was it was not fitting with, with uh, YouTube algorithm. I was kind of getting tired of reviewing things in a very set structure because uh, it just it just didn't fit the way I wanted to write about films, and it just made things very robotic and it made each segment a bit of a chore. And yeah, I just didn't feel it anymore. Um, I wanted to like do. Do more, uh, do more free form kind of reviews, um, yeah. So it it just kind of like faded the times, if I'm honest. Um, da, 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 da. Cameron Blythe, what some movie a critic says was bad, but you actually enjoyed it. Uh, I like the movie Click with Adam Sandler, goofy but fun. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably, I remember Roger Ebert not liking a Takeshi Kitano film for the same reasons I really loved it. Uh, there's a film called Kikijuro. It's uh, it's a Japanese uh, comedy about um, about a, a, a yakuza gangster who has to take a little boy on a road trip to meet his uh, meet his uh, long lost family or something like that. And it's it's pretty dark, but also kind of funny at the same time. It's it's really entertaining, and uh, Kitano has a very distinct way of directing films, uh, almost photographic in a sense. And Roger Ebert didn't like it for like the reasons I liked it, <laughs> so I'll probably go with that as an answer. Um, uh, Ethan Free director, do you think the upcoming Tom and Jerry movie will be good? I think this is the fifth time I've been asked this in a stream. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make make this very clear again. Um, I I like the idea that Tom and Jerry are part of the film story rather than the background of the story, but the actual story they're going with doesn't seem that interesting. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything there. It's just Tom and Jerry in a hotel, and the hotel's trying to run properly. That's that's it. That's all I get from the from the trailer, and the animation doesn't even doesn't even look that great. So yeah, I'm not that hyped. The only thing that interests me is the cast. It's got a pretty good cast. Um, Evan J. Sims, in my opinion, I'm way more terrified at the scary forest scene from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs than Pinocchio. I get why, I get why. It's, it's, it's because, it's because you can't read, it's, it's a, it's a principle of horror. It's one of the mechanics of horror. It's, it's because you can't read exactly what's in the forest and it's playing tricks with your mind. Um, it's quite clever. Um, da, 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 da. Goji from 13, my predictions for the winner of Godzilla vs. Kong, whatever makes the most compelling story, I don't really mind. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I'm not I'm not gonna get competitive. I I just wanna see what's what where it's gonna go and how the ending will affect the film. And I know it's probably gonna get, get political like it did with the the last Godzilla vs. King Kong movie. It's probably gonna get political and uh they're going to it's probably gonna lean towards King Kong. Because it's an American production, I know it probably will go that direction. Because that's what, when 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 Japan had the crossover, they were like, actually, we're gonna make sure that Godzilla wins. But I can't remember actually. Um, da, 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 da. Cameron Blythe, would you recommend Fantasia? While in primary school, uh, we had the video, and I got bored because we were wondering where is Mickey Mouse. Um, 
to be to be honest, I loved Fantasia as a kid. When, growing up, I I actually so so here's the thing. Um, most growing up, most of my family members were either on the other side of England or in a completely different country. So if I wanted to visit them, we had to take like a seven-hour car trip or a plane to go and visit relatives. And one of my relatives, my mum's mum, my nana, she, uh, uh, one of the things I loved about going to visit her in her bungalow was that she had all these VHS tapes of um, like anime, animation-related things. And like it's it's kind of through her that she introduced me to more abstract, more surreal kinds of animation, like early Aardman shorts and Fantasia. And she even told me stories of like how she went to the uh, went to like the UK premiere of Fantasia or something. Like it was. The, fir the first time it got shown, she went to that. Um, so yeah, I have a, I have a bit of a soft spot for Fantasia. I can get why kids might not like it. Uh, it's definitely one of the more mature and experimental Disney animated features. But at the same time, I remember watching the dinosaur segment at school and being completely riveted. It was like Dinosaur Month or something at my school and the kids got put into the assembly hall and they screened the dinosaur segment, and uh, um, they actually the teachers pointed out. It's like, why weren't the rest of you uh, as excited as James there? And I was like, what? <laughs> it was weird. Um, Go to from thirteen. Are you aware of the Italian Pinocchio movie from two thousand and nineteen? Not really. I don't think so. Uh, Ethan, free director. What are your thoughts on Shrek Five? There's nothing to go on at the moment, so I don't really have an opinion. Autistic fan, what are some films that you like more as an adult than as a teen? Um, than as a teen? I don't know. Because a lot of the films that I got onto as a teenager, I still like to this day. It's like I kind of found my taste more when I was a teenager. Because I was, I, was I was more adventurous. I was just trying to find anything and everything from around the world. And that's kind of stayed with me. I'd say that my opinions compared to when I was a child have changed, but as a teenager, they're, they're kind of the same sort of. Um, no, I don't think there is. I don't think there is, if I'm honest. Um, uh, computer guy, I have only one thing to say about Godzilla vs. Kong. Gozilla, Gozilla! <laughs> uh, GojiFan13, are you aware that the unmade Superman movie that... Uh, would have been directed by Tim Burton and would have starred Nicolas Cage as Superman. Yes, I've seen the documentary on this movie. It's crazy. It's it's, it's a crazy idea for a film. And a part of me kind of wish it was made just to see the spectacle. But at the same time, it probably would have not made a lot of DC fans happy. Because <laughs> it was just bonkers. You had, you had Tim Burton, you had Nicolas Cage, and you had the producer of Wild Wild West who was obsessed with spiders. <laughs> You're going to get something friggin' weird. I remember watching the documentary thinking, what is going on in this film? <laughs> um, what is fan? What is your favourite live-action Batman film? Ooh, it's a good one. Because I know whenever someone asks me, favourite Batman film, I'm like, ooh, Mask of Phantasm. Um, damn, damn, damn. Uh, favourite live-action Batman film? <sighs> Dang, I don't know at this stage keep in mind i've not watched the nolan trilogy in a long long time so i'm not going to pick one of those i'd say possibly batman 1989 maybe 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 it's either either that or returns um do, 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 trying to find where i am in the chat now do, 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 where am i Oh, okay, Autistic Fan, what's your favourite live-action Batman film? Oh, I've just read that one, oh, sorry. Uh, Evan J. Sims, I've, uh, it's okay, I found Morgius to be an incredibly fun villain. Uh, thank you. Um, it, was a it was a fun villain to write and voice act, to be fair. <laughs> uh, there was a lot, of, there was definitely a lot, there was like a, a mix of influences for that one. Um, and I kind of channeled channel them all into the character. Uh, and I kind of wish I saved that villain for something else, to be honest. It fits in something completely different. Um... My mention 1998, what do you think of the theory that Godzilla goes to Japan because it's his territory? I don't know, sorry. Uh, Bevan Borges, Peter Cullen or Hugo Weaving? And this is probably in relation to Transformers, but the thing is, Peter Cullen 
is a far more experienced voice actor. If you're comparing voice acting, Peter Gullen is the king <laughs> compared to Hugo Weaving. I love Hugo Weaving and he has a good voice, but there's a difference between live action acting and voice acting and Cullen is just way more qualified. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, in memory of the guy, what was your favorite role of Christopher Plummer? Let, re let, let, let me remember what he's done, just to be fair. He's done quite, he's done quite a lot. I, I'm probably going to go with Knives Out, but I don't know. Let me just... I'm just going to double check his filmography to try and remember what he's done. Because there might be something... Something else. Damn it, where's your filmography? There we go. Skimming through to see if there's anything here. Um... So, yeah, I'm probably going to go with Knives Out. Like, yeah, he's iconic as as um Charles Muntz but his role his role I just really love his role in Knives Out it's a really sweet role and I feel like that that's that's probably Christopher that's probably a better reflection of Christopher as well um ba -ba 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 -ba. Manage if you were to make a Pinocchio movie and had to put Johnny Depp in it who would you cast him as uh I don't know I can't think of any wasn't isn't there like a sly fox in Pinocchio? I think Johnny could have done that pretty well. I think that's the only one that comes to mind, if I'm honest, because most of the characters are much older. Uh, well, like I know I know Depp is like in his fifties, but I'm talking like really older. Um, and I've seen Depp try to put on like old makeup, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, where am I? Autistic fan. See, we now know you feel how you feel how you feel about NC's reviews, but how do you feel about his editorials, top 11s, and old versus news? Same opinion, and I'd rather not get into that because I've had so many streams where we've ended up in that same topic for ages. It's, I'm sorry, it's just getting tiring. I've made it clear that I don't like his stuff. I don't like any of his stuff, and I'm not a fan of his anymore. Um, I yeah, I'm not. I'm just gonna leave it there. Um. Even free director, what are your anticipations for Space Jam 2? Um, none. There's nothing to really work with at this stage, and I'm not much of a fan of the original Space Jam, so... Meh. Uh, Cooper Dude, what is your favourite MCU movie? Quite possibly Ant-Man and the Wasp, but this month for Film Chums, me and Viva are going to talk about the MCU film, so I have to watch them all again. <laughs> So, I might change my mind this time, but for now, I'm going to go with Ant-Man and the Wasp, just because it's just really imaginative, really trippy, completely different to the other MCU films, because it's way more experimental and out there, <laughs> and, like, you just don't know where it's going to end up. I find it so exciting because of that. Um, da, 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 da. Computer Guy, speaking of Takeshi Kitano, have you ever seen Battle Royale? Yes, I have. I've reviewed Battle Royale on my channel quite a lot while back ago, and I've seen the sequel, Battle Royale 2, as well. Uh, yeah, I, I love the Battle Royale. I love the first Battle Royale. The second one's boring as hell. Um, but, like, the first Battle Royale is so fun. And just, like, it's just a really cool, fun movie with some some really poignant things to say about the school system and uh, teen culture. It's, it's pretty damn good. And to get Katano in that film is just terrifying. It's like, it's, it's like Katano at his best, maybe, when it comes to his acting style. Um... Ba, 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 ba. Go to from 13. I remember reading a comment that the original Tom and Jerry movie would have been better if it focused on Tom and Jerry's journey to, to their owner's home, and I imagine the villain would be a skinny, bumbling animal catcher. Maybe that sounds a bit generic, but at the same time, I would prefer that to like being overcomplicated. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Computer guy. I agree, that would have been better, but I still like what we got. Uh, da, 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 da. Minus 1998, uh, since Godzilla starred in two movies in the MonsterVerse and Kong only starred in one, I don't really mind if Kong gets more screen time and focus. If, in fact, it kind of seems fair. That's that's a good point, actually. Uh, Shane Vance, how do you feel about the original concept for the Emperor's New Groove, Kingdom of the Sun? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the documentary Sweatbox. And I've seen that documentary twice. Why do I not remember what the Kingdom of the Sun is like? <laughs> Um, for those who don't know, there's a documentary called The Sweatbox, which Disney refuses to um, release 
but you can find it pirated online. It is basically a documentary about how um, some filmmakers at Disney tried to make this Prince and the Pauper style uh, movie with like a Lion King kind of aesthetics, as far as I remember. Um, and like, I'd say that the, that's the thing. I'd probably say that the story behind the King of the Sun is probably going to be more interesting than what the King of the Sun could have probably be, maybe just because the, just because of what went behind the scenes was just so fascinating. Um, da, 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 da. Cooper dude. Wait, James is, that's your real name. Yes. James is my real name. Uh, my mum uh, calls me Jimbalata Mash Potata. <laughs> Uh, and so I know some family friends have called me Jim Bob in the past as well. Uh, uh, Camera Blythe, do you have a favorite Michael Jackson song? Possibly Earth. I really like Earth. Uh, Ghost Fan 13. In the 90s, there was going to be a Godzilla vs. Kong where Kong would fall in love with a female scientist who would later turn him into a cyborg, but nothing else about the plot is known other than that. It was cancelled because Turner Entertainment interfered, claiming they held the rights to Kong even though he was technically in the public domain. Mm. Just spilling water everywhere. <laughs> interesting. That's kind of interesting, but at the same time, it sounds like a it sounds like a typical kind of Godzilla movie plot. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Uh, da, da, da. Ethan Director, what are your thoughts on Boss Baby Two and Spirit Untamed? Boss Baby Two, I <laughs> meh. Uh, I've seen the trailer. There's there's nothing to. It just seems I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have any feelings on it or opinions on it. Spirit, same with Spirit Untamed. I've not even seen the Spirit TV show, so no opinion. Um, da, 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 da. So, Ethan, director, do you think Superman Lives should have lived? Maybe. Again, I like I said early on. I I don't know. I'm kind of mixed because on the one hand it could have been a really terrible film, but the other hand it could have been a bonkers fun kind of film. So I don't know. Yeah, you can't really tell from the development stage. Um, Evan J Sims, just to inform you, reviewer Chris Stuckman gave Earwig and the Witch a C minus. Uh, I'm not surprised because the reception so far is kind of a lot of people have been like, eh. <laughs> Duh, 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 duh. March 1998. What do you think of the Underminer for Incredibles one and two? And would you have liked to? Ha what have you like? Liked to have seen him more? Um, he's pretty fun, mainly thanks to the design in John Ratzenberger. But there's not much to really go on because he only appears right at the end of Incredibles one and right at the beginning of Incredibles two. So there's not much to work with. Uh, but I do know there's a video game spin-off involving him, so maybe that develops him a bit more. So, don't know. Um. Cameron Blythe, which actor did you look up to the most as a teenager kid? Uh, that would be Johnny Depp. Uh, I had a Tim Burton face as a teenager, and I remember being quite obsessed with like how Depp could transform himself into different roles, and that was a big influence on me growing up. Because uh, keep in mind, I, I was interested in acting from the age of seven. I was in community plays and stuff like that. And then when I was, became a teenager and I started filmmaking, I started acting in my own films. So, yeah. Um, duh, duh, duh. Ethan Free Director, do you think... Do you think a like will survive after the failure... Oh, do you think Laika will s survive after the failure of The Missing Link? I think they will. Because... Yeah, it failed, but not many people were that excited about box trolls either. They, they still went on to make more stuff, so I think I think they'll be fine. I really do think they'll be fine. Well, I hope they'll be fine. <laughs> One of the only stop mo mainstream stop motion studios out there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Goji Fan Thirteen. By the time you're an old man, what elderly fictional character would you want to be like? Fred Rogers. Oh no, he's real. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of any... There's not really any old characters like Fred Rogers. <laughs> uh, technically, he is a character. He puts on an act for his show. I just want to be kind of like Fred Rogers. He's my hero, so... I'd love to I'd love to live a legacy, live a life where I have that kind of impact. Um, what is a fan? Not including Ghibli, what is your second favourite anime film? Um, possibly Tokyo Godfathers. Possibly. Uh, which is that's it's, it's a Satoshi Kon film about 
uh, free homeless people helping a baby get back to his parents. It's, it's very funny, but also kind of dark, um, kind of crazy, kind of weird, but very profound and heartwarming too. It's a really great movie. It's set at Christmas, but it's not very Christmassy. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. March 1980. How about Michael Keaton? Who would you cast him as in Pin a Pinocchio movie? I don't know. I can't think of any Pinocchio characters he'd be really good as. Possibly, possibly the guy that runs the Pleasure Island. Because uh, if you think back to Beetlejuice, it's the same kind of vibe. That kind of sleazy vibe. So I think he could have done a good job as him. Um, bah, 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 why am I in the chat? Go to fan. I think you should put a disclaimer in your stream saying, I don't like Star Trek critics, so please don't ask any questions about him to save you the trouble. I feel like I should at this point. <laughs> um, Levin Borges, Ice Age or its sequels? Um, oh, oh, do you mean like which I prefer? Ice Age, original, original Ice Age is like the superior one out of all of them, absolutely. Uh, autistic fan, have you seen David Firth's short Cream? Yes, I have. I've seen pretty much nearly everything that David Firth has done. And if you head over to my channel, there's a video of me hanging out with him, we're do we're, and we were trying some weird shit. <laughs> Basically, me and him were the, were a guest at the same convention, and I got in touch with him and said, "Hey, I've, I'm I'm gonna I bought a load of weird shit. Let's 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 do a video and like try them together." <laughs> so that exists. Um, he's a really cool guy, really, really, really sound guy. Um, he was he was cool to ch uh, chat and hang out with, um, and the convention was really nice because they 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 set out a room for us to record in as well. But that's definitely one of the weirdest videos. And he was he was very enthusiastic as well. He had all these I had more ideas than I had when we were making that video. He was like, hey, let's do this now, let's do this, uh, and all that kind of jazz. And he was helping out with sound. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Um, go to round thirteen. No, Takeshi Kitani once interviewed the leader of the cult, Am Shi... Oh, I'm so bad at pronouncing the names. Uh, I think it's Om Shinrikyo Shoko Asahara. Um, okay, I hope I didn't butch that. Um, I didn't know that, but now I want to. Because Takeshi is kind of... He's kind of a very eccentric guy himself, so to see... And he, yeah, he has some very controversial ways of looking at things. So that might be kind of fascinating to watch. I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, Coach from 13. For some reason, when you say Evan J. Sims, it sounds like a second, for a second, like O.J. Simpson to me. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Ink from Free Director, have you played any of the Nicktoons crossover games? Not that I'm aware of, I'm afraid. I don't think I've played any Nickelodeon games except for Rugrat Studio Tour. And that was when I was a little kid. Um, I remember renting it from Blockbuster for my PS1. Um, Autism fan, have you seen Fruits Basket, Old or New, Angel Beats, or Your Lie in April? Um, I've seen the first episode of Fruits Basket. I've not seen either of the other shows. Um, I was going to be cast in Yezu Otaku's um, Fruits Basket radio play series. But then he decided to uh, end the series before it got to my episode. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's my new connection with Fruits Basket. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Go to from 13. How did you discover Fred Rogers? Uh, I can't even remember now. I really can't. I think the thing that made me become a fan of his definitely was there was a documentary about his life. And I can't remember what it was called. Remind myself, I've seen this documentary twice. Uh, Fred Rogers documentary, what's it called? Uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor? It's a really damn good documentary that explains in depth what was so important about him um, and how much of an impact he left. Computer Guy, is stop motion even still relevant when computer animation can mimic the style so well now? I mean, look at Lego Movie. I've sworn it was a stop motion film when I saw it. That saw it in trailers. Yeah, it can mimic it, but it's not the same feel. And I say that as a stop motion filmmaker myself, it is not the same feel. It's not the same vibe. It can copy it, but it's not going to be the same. You're going to get a different experience when you watch an actual stop motion film, especially a handcrafted one or a low budget one. When you look at the, when you look at an Aardman film, it's different to what what these other films are trying to, like, achieve. 
It's 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 kind it's like a shell of what stop, stop motion is, I think. And again, I say that as a stop motion animator. Um, Mind nineteen ninety eight. Have you seen the Bad Boys trilogy? I've seen the first Bad Boys. I hated it. I I genuinely hated it. I re and I don't use that word often. I really don't. I like to cut down on that word because it's such a strong word. But I genuinely hated Bad Boys because that film is just it's just people arguing for two hours. It's just it's just it's just people constantly arguing. There's there's more arguing than actual action. <laughs> And you've got this, you've got this stupid um, trying to keep up a liar's act going off, and it's just, uh, you've got a waste, you've got wasted talents in the film. I just don't like Bad Boys. I'm sorry, I really don't like Bad Boys. So I have no interest in watching the sequels. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Cooper dude, do you still like Mary Max even though it's been dethroned as your favourite? I've not watched Mary Max in a long, 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 long time. Not since I reviewed it, I think. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it anymore. Uh, Ghost from 13. Do you believe Bratz franchise is a bad fr bad influence on girls? I don't think I'm qualified to go over that because I don't really know Bratz very well. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm the right person to ask. Sorry. Even for your director, have you seen the Green Eggs and Ham Netflix series? No, I haven't, but I do plan to check it out sometime. Um... Da, 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 da. Evan J. Sims, did you know that there's a behind-the-scenes featurette about the making of Kermit Swamp Years on the special feature section on its DVD? It's hosted by a Muppet armadillo named, named Joe. That sounds kind of cute. I'm going to keep that in mind. That sounds kind of cute. Now, I, even though I don't like that film, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing the making of. Uh, Bevan Borges, Devin Bostick or Charlie Wright? I don't know who... Yeah, I don't know who those people are. You'll have to remind me who those people are. Uh, Cameron Blind, did you ever watch the C... Do you mean CBB? CBB show 64 Zoom Lane from the 90s as a kid. Not that I remember, no. Uh, Go Shifan 13, I'll tweet that interview to guess you did uh, after the stream. Thank you, that'd be appreciated. Uh, Socialist Yorkshire Daddy, hey up. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. No, don't worry about it. Never feel obligated to come a certain time for these streams. Uh, it's just a place for people to come to, to come chill. It's Never feel like it's a chore to be here. <laughs> Um, ba 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 ba. If you direct, I saw a review on Hoodwinked, and no, you're not a fan of it, but that you said you think it could have been a good movie. That was Hoodwinked was a long, 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 long. That's a real review, so I can't, I can't say how it could have been better. I'm afraid, and I don't tend to rewatch films I didn't enjoy. <laughs> um, Go Japan 13. How would the world have been if Fred Rogers was God? Perfect. Perfect. 100 bazillion percent perfect. He's the greatest human that ever existed. And I tend to reserve putting human beings on pedestals, but Fred earned it. Um, Cameron Bly, thoughts on Bob Ross? I love Bob Ross. He's, he's definitely, he's someone that definitely could compete with Fred Rogers and wholesomeness. And he shows just so damn relaxing. So relaxing. Like, you don't have to even have to be into art to enjoy his show, because he's just such a chill guy, and you're like, yeah, you paint whatever you want, man, just keep, just, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> um, Autis Van, how do you feel about your umbrella short? Um, in hindsight, I know it could have been better with a bigger budget, but I'm quite proud of a lot of things about it. Uh, yeah. It's, it was a learning, it was definitely a learning step for me, and it, at the same time, it was an, I think the most important thing for Umbrella for me was to show my fans my YouTube channel that I could actually make films. <laughs> um, I wanted to show, like, yeah, this is what I can do, <laughs> yeah, on a low budget, um, because not many people knew I was a filmmaker outside of YouTube. Um, so that was the, my main goal of that was that, and it had a really good reception, and I was really happy with that. Um, and I was I was so freaking nervous when it premiered as well. Me and my composer Karanza, we were like so nervous. Felt sick. <laughs> it was really oh yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes I've rewatched it and I'm like, yeah, that could be better. That could be better. That could have been that better. But for the most part, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, and I have plans for other projects soon. And again, Umbrella was my was my um, was a practice thing. It was my learning curve. And the stuff that I when, I, when I was working on that, I learned from it. And I thought, okay, next time I'll do this. Next time I'll do that. Um, I'm going to head off soon, by the way, folks. I've got to carry on with my video 
about 10 different animated straight-to-video superhero films that, again, is probably going to be an hour and a half long. Do you think you could watch an hour and a half long Jambriki video? Do you? <laughs> um, why am I in the chat? Uh, Ethan Free Director, what are your thoughts on the idea of Chicken Run 2? Um, I've, I think this has been asked in another stream before, but, like, at this point, there's not much to work with, and... I don't know what the conflict is going to be because they now live on an island. Um, and I remember one of my fears is that it could be one of those, like, overdone generic save the forest kinds of talking animal movies. And I don't want it to be that because we've, we've got enough of those already. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, Cameron Blythe. Well, I guess I won't give Bad Boys a watch. It's up to you. But for me personally, that was one of the... I only watched it because I was going to do a video about it to tie in with the release of Bad Boys 3. I watched it and I was like, I've got nothing to say about this film. <laughs> nothing. I just didn't enjoy myself. I felt miserable watching it. <laughs> um, that's the problem with Michael Bay's films. It's like, yeah, they're mindless, but I think the bigger problem is how friggin' mean-spirited they are. <laughs> like, they're so hard to get through because there's just people being nasty to each other for an hour and a half. Or longer. <laughs> um... Uh, Ethan Free Direct, have you seen the fan film Return to Zootopia? I'm afraid not, no. Uh, Bevan Borges, Diane from Wimpy Kid played, played Roderick. I. Uh, oh, uh, I've not seen Diane from Wimpy Kid, so, sorry. Uh, Go to Fan 13, your complaint about bad boys reminds me of my problem with The Wolf of Wall Street. It's just swearing and yelling with the main characters acting like unlikable assholes. Don't see how DiCaprio was uh, robbed of an Oscar. I've not seen Wolf of Wall Street, so I can't say anything, sorry. Um, so she's Orc Steady. Now, nah, I wanted to be here, but I completely, completely forgot. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Really don't worry. Uh, okay, so streams. For those who don't know, I stream, and I've been streaming since November, by the way. Some people think this is a new thing, and it's not. Um, I stream 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays, I let my fans decide what I stream. So it could be anything. You all have a poll, and uh, people decide what kind of format to go with. Um, Wednesdays, it's a quiz night, and like viewers can take part in a quiz that I've designed, and the quiz will be associated with some kind of film or animation-related topic. Fridays is gaming night, and at the moment I'm playing uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, right, just a couple more questions that I've got to head off. Um... Da, 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 where am I in the chat? Even for your director, do you think Narnia will come back? Possibly because it's it's such it's it's such a such an easy franchise for studios to milk if they want to if they want to work off the success of Lord the Lord of Rings franchise, the Middle Earth franchise. So yeah, it could do. Um uh, Social Yorks' Daddy. Have you seen Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels? Fords. Um, I think the only Guy Ritchie film I saw was... Was it Snatch? Yes, it's Snatch. I've only seen Snatch and it was a long time ago that I saw it, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, Go to Final 13. If you were immortal, would you skydive into a volcano? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> if I'm immortal, then yeah. <laughs> uh, Evan J. Sims, so Fred Rogers is better than Jesus. Well, I, I'm not a Christian, so yeah, <laughs> I, I would say that. Um, my man is shown 1998. I know not a lot of people talk about Lion King 2019, but what did you think of Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner as Timon and Pumper? Definitely some of the better voice actors in the film, but that's not saying much. Um... Cameron Blythe, I thought that Seth Rogen was a decent voice for Pumba for the remake, just the movie was, wasn't was good. Um, uh, Ethan Free Director, do you think Friends will get a movie? Probably, maybe. The hype is there, but I don't care because I don't like Friends anymore. I, I have a nostalgic attachment to it, but like it is aged really, really badly, and I just can't watch it. I can't watch it anymore. Just sad because like, it, it has a lot of nostalgic... Like, uh, feel for me for it. When I watch it, it takes me back to being a kid again. I'm watching it with my family on Friday nights on Channel 4. But I can't watch it anymore because I just, I just find it so awkward. Um, da, 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 da. 
damn. Uh, why am I in the chat? Uh, Goju fan. Uh, do, do you wish Bob Ross and Fred Rogers did a collaboration at some point? I wish they did, and I think they both work for PBS as well, so it could have been possible. Um, I really got. To, I think I'm going to do uh, one more question, and I've got to head off. Go to fan thirteen. Uh, what do you think of Seth Rogen's comedy? Uh, I'm not much of a fan, if I'm honest. I prefer I prefer Seth Rogen when someone else is someone else is writing. <laughs> I don't think he's a very good comedy writer. Um, I mean, like I tried to watch the interview, and it's just it's just really vulgar juvenile humor and i just i just couldn't get into it it was like watching it it was like watching something that a 12 year old had written um he's a cool guy i like him as a person and i like i think he's a really distinct kind of actor and he's a very talented comedy actor i just don't think he's a good writer uh i think the only good thing he wrote was possibly super bad okay so i really need to head off now folks and get on with this video i hope you enjoyed the stream do not worry if you've missed most of it because I now have an archive channel where all my broadcasts go onto there. It's all it's called Jamboreeki Highlights. So Jamboreeki Highlights is a YouTube channel. Um, so if you go there, all all of my streams are going to be uh, pretty much put on there. Um, so yeah, if you missed this, head over to there, and I hope you all have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good 3 a.m., whatever time it is for you.